Welcome to part two of this video in which I am going over a list of possible video titles. Um, this, I'll put it up anyway, um, is another possible title, although it's not very catchy and I, I'm sure it will be possible to think of something better. Um, but the question is, how does pressure and temperature affect water? Um, there is a, a, a sort of graph or a picture um, I've seen which shows the boiling and the freezing points of water at different atmospheric pressures. Um, and it's quite interesting, um, and this is obviously very important when you are considering the possibility of finding liquid water on other planets orbiting other stars. It's not just the temperature which is important, the pressure um, has an effect on it. Uh, a, rela a related question is what happens to liquid water in a vacuum? Um, does it just boil away, uh, evaporate, or what? I'm not exactly sure. Um, so, a lot of these, a lot of these questions, stroke video titles at this point, are rhetorical. Um, I will, when I get time, also. I didn't mention this in part one. Um, I will put a list of these questions, stroke titles, in the description. So, check it, check it out. When you, if, if you're interested. Um, this next one is, the, the, the question is, what is the shape of the universe? Um, this by its very nature is a hard question to uh, get your head around, or it's very hard to answer in any, in, in any sort of way which uh, anyone who hasn't looked into the subject in some detail can really get their head around. Um, some people call the universe a hypersphere. Um, often we imagine it as being spherical. Um, but the trouble is, because of the finite speed of light, um, and the fact that, well, I say fact, that is making the assumption that Einstein was right, which I think he was, but a lot of people argue that um, he was barking up the wrong tree. Anyway. Because of the finite speed of light, when we look out into space, we also look back in time. Um, so we are not seeing the distant parts of the universe as they are now. So the universe will have expanded more. But then that leads back to the question of um, what does now mean? Um, if simultaneity, two events happening at the same time, can only work on a local scale. Um, it kind of renders the whole concept of things happening simultaneously in different parts of the universe meaningless. Um, while we're on the subject of people who think Einstein was stupid or an idiot, um, I already made a couple of fairly um, brief videos on Bill Gady, a bit a guy who I would say is a pseudoscientist. Um, this video title, this list dates, you know, I started writing this uh, many, many months ago before I made videos about Bill Gady himself, but I was just commenting with him. Um, and I was wanting to make a video called Bill Gady, pseudoscientist or genius. Um, I'm sure he thinks he falls into the latter category. Um, most other people I have spoken with would say he's definitely a pseudoscientist. Moving on, um, another possible video title, not a very concise one, is Say what you really think, not what people want to hear. And this would be some exploration of how easy it is to speak your mind online with the anonymity of the internet compared with real-life situations where people feel a lot more self-conscious and um, don't want to cause upset. Um, another observation I've had for a very long time, which um, is a lot of people seem to um, watch movies and uh, especially when the movies are concerning conspiracies and um, 
uh, what's the obvious word that's not coming to my brain just now? Uh, science fiction. Brain's running slow today. Um, I think a lot of people see things in movies and for some reason um, they get a little bit confused with what is and what isn't possible in real life. Um, and as far as movies go, the characters, um, you know, for the sake of making an interesting story, um, most of the time they say exactly what they think in situations and you don't so often get um, shy people um, or people who bottle things up um, in films and in fictional situations. So that is, is all stuff I would like to put into a video. Um, say what you really think, not what people want to hear. Um, finally, getting on to something which is related to religion and atheism. Um, simple title, Are We All Agnostic? Um, first of all, we have to break down what agnostic is. There seem to be two um, definitions. Um, and this uh, irritating thing is the reason why uh, there's a lot of argument about what agnostic means. People talk cross-purposes a lot of the time. Cross-purposes. Um, agnostic can mean you don't know something, um, but it can also mean that you think something is unknowable. So when it comes to the existence of God or not, um, I would call myself an agnostic atheist, which means that I don't know if there's a God or not. I don't think there is, but I don't know. Um, somebody who has spent more time studying philosophy and looking into it might well be of the persuasion that um, the question is unanswerable. Um, I don't know that it's unanswerable, so I wouldn't call myself an agnostic who says that uh, it's not possible to know whether there's a god or not. hope that makes some sense. Anyway, it's something I would at some point... I've, I've touched on it in the past in other videos, but I would like to make a video specifically about that. Um, another video title um, is What a Wonderful World. Um, Louis Armstrong made a song. I don't know, I'm not sure if he wrote it or not, but uh, a really nice song which has been covered by a number of people, including, bizarrely, David Attenborough. Um, now, this this would be a video which um, explores in, not, not in huge detail, I don't think this will turn into something very long, but the amazing things which happen, you know, in, in, world, in the world and in nature. Uh, and in the universe. And I would like to put on the end of this video the uh, David Attenborough version of What's a Wonderful World. It's got some amazing video clips and um, it was used as a trailer by the BBC not so long ago. Um, I'll put, if I can find it, the link to that particular trailer, which is available on YouTube, in the description. But it's one of these things which, before I had all my problems with the computer, um, I downloaded a copy of, meaning to do something with, but haven't. Another video title, something I would really like to make a video about, is How Do Rainbows Work? Um, for this, I would really like to have a sunny day um, where I can take the video camera up a ladder with the garden hose and show you, the audience, that rainbows are a complete circle. Um, we normally see a rainbow as an arc because the Earth gets in the way. But if you ever see a rainbow from very high, uh, either from a plane or from the top of a tall building, you might be able to see that it is a complete circle. And it is, from memory, I think, 84 degrees. Um, which means that most cameras, including mine, doesn't have a wide enough angle on the lens to be able to see the whole thing at any one time, so you have to pan round. Um, one thing about rainbows I'll just mention now is that um, 
this is this is something I've known since I was a kid, just from looking at them. Um, when you see a rainbow, even if you see only part of the curve, if you imagine that that curve is part of a large circle, the centre of that circle is where the shadow of your head will be. So if you take a line from the shadow of your head through your head, and then look out in the other direction, that is where the sun will be. Um, something I'd like to make a video about anyway. Um, moving on, another video title, Is Our Civilization Just a Blip in History? Um, this is looking at the prediction made by a lot of people that um, our society, our civilization is on the point of collapsing. Um, some would argue that this process has already started um, in terms of economic collapse, especially countries like uh, Greece and Ireland. Um, so it's just looking at uh, if it's going to collapse soon, how is it going to happen, can it be avoided, is it a bad thing? Um, we know previous civilizations such as the the Greeks, the Romans, the ancient Egyptians, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Toltecs in South America, these civilizations have flourished and then they have virtually disappeared and the people who survived lived in much more primitive conditions, um, almost to the point of being hunter-gatherers at some time. Um, before our present technological um, explosion, you know, really starting with the Industrial Revolution, um, we had the Middle Ages, or the Dark Ages. Um, anyway, these are things I would like to explore in another uh, video at some point. Um, worth mentioning that uh, all these ideas I have, uh, quite often I'll go off on a tangent and I'll start with one idea and I'll end up, you know, making a video about something fairly different. Um, another video title, um, Religious Faith and Gambling. Uh, this relates to Pascal's Wager and the whole notion that um, if you have faith that the um, stories contained in the Bible are correct, um, if you believe that, then you're possibly saving yourself the, um, possibly avoiding going to hell, whatever that exactly is, for eternity, whatever that exactly is. Whenever I start to go down the road of exploring these religi religious, I can't talk, these religious assertions, they tend to raise more questions than answers. Um, so yeah, the I want I'd like to make a video or put the idea out for anyone who's interested in drawing a connection between religious faith and gambling. Um, something else I would like to make, and it's also from uh, anyone who watched my previous video. Um, it is an idea sparked by something which. Phil Hellenes mentioned in his Speculum, or his Meerkat video, um, and that is myth-based education. Um, this seems a bizarre concept, but it is unfortunately true in the real world. In Britain, we have um, what they call faith schools. I don't know if in America and other parts of the world they call them that. Um, whether they just call it religious education or what, but um, faith schools, um, you get a lot of Catholic schools, usually the name of the school usually starts with Saint something or other, Saint Bartholomew, Saint Anne, Saint Catherine, whatever. Um, but it's not just uh, the Catholics, there are a number of other specifically religious schools in this country. Um, which seems to me a very biased way of approaching the education of our young people. Not very clever, not very sensible. Um, but the idea of calling that myth-based education, I think, is interesting and provocative. 
Um, I think this is getting quite long, so I'm going to stop there and I'm going to end up making part three. So, see you later.